go from this to this. I'll take you through it. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Rebecca. Today, I'm gonna talk eyelashes. And I'm gonna talk natural lashes and lash serums and mascara. I have reviewed lash serums before, lash growth serums before on my channel. Um, I only share if I like them, if I have any results. Disclaimer, lash growth serums on me take forever. So I usually don't see results for about six months. I think that is just how my hair growth cycle works because I feel like the hair on my head grows slow like I feel like I get my hair cut but you know I don't my hair doesn't really go anywhere <laughs> like my hair grows <laughs> but it's just I'm not one of those people that goes oh my gosh yeah my hair grows so fast or my nails grow fast or this that I wanted to talk about and I am giving you this in a very basic layman way because one I've only understood this on a surface level. I only have anecdotal information. I am not a dermatologist or a hair specialist or anything else or even an ophthalmologist. But I wanted to give you what some of the stuff I've seen that is supposed to be that is starting to sound kind of scary um, and reassure you and some things that are just kind of only humanly possible. So if you're seeing other claims, maybe think critically. So, and that is one, are lash serums harm more harm than good? And I think you have to, what, what do you mean by harmful? You know, um, are lash serums causing things like thinning eyelids, um, darkening irises, sunken eyes, maybe. And we are hearing a lot of prostaglandins, what lash serums are prostaglandin free, and why lash serums had prostaglandins to begin the, in them to begin with. And prostaglandin is, is a hormone. I mean, if you know anything about reproductive issues, um, you've probably heard about it. And it's also used in eye drops for glaucoma patients. My mom is a glaucoma patient. So I give her eye drops, I give her three eye drops a day, almost every day, because I'm at her house four to five days a week. And she is blind in one eye, and she's been using them for four years. So I know what these drops do. <laughs> firsthand and everyone is different and everyone has different reactions to prescription medication anyway, right? That's why they list, you know, the the 0.1% of uh, possible side effects, et cetera, et cetera. So do the, can these things happen in some people? Yes. Has it happened in my mom? No. My mom, I've already shared on my channel, she had the blepharoplasty surgery for her, sink, the, her droopy eyelids. She did that in her late 60s because it was actually physically in, er, in interfering with her vision. Um, and now she's 83 and honestly, her lids are kind of droopy again, but her lids are droopy on both sides and I'm only giving her eye drops on the left, left. So, that can be hereditary. The other thing is her underneath area hasn't thinned either significantly from one eye to the other. And the other thing that's most important in her case is her iris has not changed color. And the reason I know this is because I look at her iris daily to check for blood clots. And that basically just is darkening, sometimes I can tell if she's got a new blood clot, which isn't a bad thing. Um, it was in the beginning, but it's not something we need to worry about. But it's something that her retina specialist tells me, you know, keep an eye on and then depending on how the color is. So sometimes her iris, which she has these very, not my shade, but she has a hazel, kind of a gold 
kind of a gold topaz eye color. And when her, one of her vessels, because of her glaucoma and because of her other retina issue, um, she can sometimes get a burst vessel, just like kind of, you can get a burst capillary and it looks a little bit dark and it's not bad. So her iris has not changed color because of her eye drops. And prostaglandins also have been used in different synthetic forms and kind of these these, um, oh, there's, a, there's a medical term for it when they make like a copy or when they make like a, a non, yeah. Like we're not getting prostaglandins from, you know, like sheep placenta. <laughs> um, just kind of like right now, Premarin, horse urine used to be like in women's estrogen and and, you know, we know that's different now, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I wanted to share that with you because, you know, but like Latisse in the old days, 20 years ago, people that were using Latisse noticed that their iris had changed color. And maybe those people are also seeing some thinning of the eyelid. So every, the lash serums out there now pretty much are prostaglandin free. Be careful, just know where you're buying your lash serum from. Don't buy your lash serum off of wish.com. Don't buy your lash serum from a farmer's market. You know, like know what you're getting. And that brings me to castor oil. Castor oil isn't a bad thing. Some people are allergic to it. It's not necessarily going to be a lash growth either. And the reason being is your lashes the hair follicles that are growing from lash serums are only getting stimulated by lash serums. You're not getting new hair follicles. And that's important to realize because the follicles that you have are the follicles you have. That's not changing. But what the lash serums are doing is they're running through the hair growth cycle. And there's like three cycles stages of the cycle and you know how like when you've got some lashes that are just coming through and then they're hanging out there for a while and then they shed and what a lash serum does is it can promote that like oh it's they're growing faster um together um and then they're hanging out there longer in that phase before they shed um, and which is why sometimes you use a lash serum and then you go, oh my gosh, all my lashes just fell out. And that's just because they're cycling through faster and your lashes are shedding anyway, but a lash serum that stimulates the growth might stimulate the other part of that phase. So anyway, what I've been using is from Swede Beauty. Now, Swede Beauty is considered a clean beauty brand. You guys know that I don't like differentiating brands by the word clean beauty versus not clean beauty because that really kind of does this other inference that things are toxic if we're not using a clean beauty brand and that is just not true. And if you talk to cosmetic chemists and other just, you know, dermatologists, chemists, scientists in general, the there, the toxicity of things that we are being told is very, is more of a vernacular that's more marketing and fear mongering than actual. Toxic, anything can be toxic. Saline can be toxic. If you put eye drops in someone's orange juice, you can kill them. Episode five of, you know, Murder She Wrote, right? Like, uh, you know, the poison is in the dose, as they say. And formaldehyde, you know, like our body produces formaldehyde. So when you hear something is formaldehyde free, that's great. I mean, I'm happy. I don't want something. I don't want added formaldehyde in like massive quantities, but just know that there's formaldehyde in apples. There's formaldehyde in you. Um, so it's, it just, it's something that I just, you know, just, just, think, just, just stop and question. I'm not saying dismiss altogether or no, that's not true. I'm just saying be careful of language and vocabulary that creates an emotion 
or a, 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 a trigger. Uh, Sweet Beauty, they market their serum as prostaglandin free. And I think that's great. I think it's great. I don't think we need added sort of fear tactics on top of that. Um, but I do think it's nice to know that that's not their lash serum. That's their mascara. This is their lash serum. Um, that the it's it, yeah, it's it's a great formula. You are getting just really good ingredients. There shouldn't be any risk to this. And also I've been using this for a long time. Um, it's July. They sent it to me. I'm going to look in my inbox when they sent me the email to send me PR. Um, but I, I, I think it's six months and I use it at night and I love it because it doesn't irritate. It doesn't, um, give me any kind of redness. Mascara is so much more fun now. And I think, and that that's happened to me before where it's like a mascara. It's like, it works so much better when you're using a lash serum. Okay. So they have a formula called their lash lift, and this is a great formula that Swede makes and it has a very narrow brush and it's got a smooth end and then a teeny tiny tiny bristle end and what this does is it helps lift the lashes so you can really comb the base and then think of it as kind of like styling mousse or gel for your you know it's like it's giving that oh, that lift um, effect. Um, and so this one is really good. I like it because I use it almost as a pre, you know, kind of like a primer, like a, a first coat of just kind of giving that, that push. And then right now, my favorite, favorite two mascaras, and they are very different because it's kind of funny, Iris and Romeo and CoverGirl. So Iris and Romeo, their lash peptide, now maybe they have some product uh, ingredients in here that promote growth. And that is the case in a lot of indie brands. A lot of some of the high-end mascaras might have some kind of serums or growth promotion factors in them. It's a lash conditioner. So what you're getting is lash conditioning. I, lo I love this mascara. And there's the brush, the shape is very unique and I guess with my eye shape and the you know the way my lashes are it just works so nicely for me and it builds but it doesn't get clumpy and then the cover girl is so to me I'm just so thrilled with it because I love a dramatic mascara I love a drugstore mascara this particular one it has this type of brush you know it's very I think kind of traditional mascara brush that we've seen has a light, slight curve to it. Um, it has a, a bit of a lift. It gives like a wispy effect. It also, it's fiber free, but it does feel like it's adding like length. You know, it's as if I can see some length happening. Um, another one because menopause and aging lashes and we want gentle formulas. Um, the Prime Lash from Prime Prometics. I've done a feature on them before and I really like this mascara. I really like their liners. They have some good stuff. I think they have a serum as well. I have not tried it. I don't have experience with that. Um, but I get PR for lash serums and honestly, I don't I only use one at a time and so I've been using the sweet beauty so I've been responding to companies saying right now I'm happy with what I've got so I'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> let me show you my little lash routine um, so that you can see So I'm gonna use the Swede lift um, and I hope that I can get a really good you know I think that like putting on mascara and getting kind of these lash cocktails it's, it's a little bit like baking a cake. Sometimes it turns out different and you're like, why is it doing that? Why is it clumping like that? Why is that lash looking like that? You know, and you're like, oh God, like it, it, it's, it's its own thing each time. So I hope I can get this result on this side uh, because here I'm showing you. But what I like to do, and I do understand that there's a lot of steps here. So 
I get it. High maintenance. Okay, we're we're talking latch serums and mascaras here. It's it's high maintenance. It's it's totally not necessary in the in the game of life. But for makeup, play along, okay? I have a lash missing on this eye because I have one all here too. I have a little bit of a gap because I rubbed my eyes. Don't touch your eyes. Just don't. Just don't. <laughs> Especially when you're not home. Like when you're running errands, don't touch your eyes. I mean, unless you just wash your hands and you have to do something, but don't touch your eyes. Okay, so don't touch your face. Um, so what I like to do is I like to kind of just take the wand at the base of the lashes and I like to blink or flick, whatever, get it, get it up there, get it up there. And yeah, and that just really kind of distributes a nice bit of product just like that. And I'm going to go in with the CoverGirl and next and show you because I think that you'll be pleased if you haven't seen me do it. Um, I like to blink. I like to roll up. <laughs> I like to roll up. Um, the Swede mascara is a little wetter than the CoverGirl and so sometimes I I got a little right there that's okay what I like to do sometimes is I can tell when a formula feels kind of wet on my lashes and I like to take a couple minutes before I continue because it's like it you just you just want it to set you know if you go too much while it's wet you you're gonna you're gonna defeat the purpose. It's gonna, it's gonna weigh down or it's gonna get clumpy. Now, some of you are gonna go, that's not how you do it, you wiggle or whatever it is. Hey, you do you. Oh, I can tell, I can tell, I can tell it's going, it's going, it's moving together. This is why sometimes a lash comb is good. I'm gonna take the Iris and Romeo just because of the way the curve, the, 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 the brush curves. And I just like doing that. It's not necessary, or you can use a comb, you can use... Uh-oh, see, look what's happening. It's going, you gotta, sometimes you just gotta stop. You gotta know when to hold them. You know, Kenny Rogers, like, I think he was a master in mascara lash and he was like, you got to know when to walk away. All right. Sorry. No, he's the gambler. He's country music star. He's not into mascara. Although before he passed away, he did get that amazing eye lift that people were like, what happened to Kenny's eyes? Remember that? Maybe he had glaucoma. Look at me. What the heck? Okay, I'm gonna just stop right there. I like it. I don't do bottom lashes. Sorry. I don't do bottom I don't do oh, so, so there we are. This is my lash routine. This is what's been uh, making me happy and I Love it because I am a girl that doesn't have time for false lashes. I can't I try to I love them and then I just frustrates me Anyway, so there you go. I'm gonna leave links in the description box and I appreciate anything that you shop in my description box. I get a commission. I hope this was helpful. And I, I, if I said anything inaccurate, like, like profoundly inaccurate um, and you wanna comment, that's fine. But if you're gonna fear monger me about other stuff or clean beauty or Anyway, alrighty, take care. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because thank you, appreciate that, and I'll see you next time.